I don't think I need to tell you this necessarily, but in North America, there really has, uh, over the past few years, become this sameness, shall we say, uh, with respect to the type of vehicles that we're buying, and also that's what's being offered by the automakers. And so, to be honest, when something comes along that is not part of that sameness, something that is completely different in design, it's gonna get noticed and it's worth talking about. And that's what I have here beside me. It is an all new design specifically catered and created for North America. It is the 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz. And that's what I'm taking a look at on this latest review. Clearly the most distinctive feature of this new 2022 Santa Cruz is really what's on the back half. Now up front, you're basically looking at a Tucson for the most part, but in back here is when you get into this active utility vehicle component because you have a bed. The rationale being, of course, is that with some SUVs, uh, those who are more, uh, as they say, the urban target market who likes to get out for weekend adventures may have uh, items to put in the cargo area that uh, don't fit because of, say, uh, height or something like that. So the idea is let's build an active bed and see uh, how much versatility comes with that. And there is versatility. What you have here is um, a bed that's just, it's a little under five feet in length. So um, this isn't really a truck. It's not a small truck. And I don't think they're trying to market it as such, uh, but it still does have versatility. Um, inside here, what you have, uh, if you needed to, you could actually fit, they say, uh, a four by eight sheet of uh, plywood. And the way you would do that is by adjusting the straps. So in terms of some interesting key features, while well, you have this tonneau cover, which uh, is, is built in, it is a hard tonneau cover, and it actually is something that you can lock if you need to keep something stored in place. There's actually a little locking mechanism that is manually done. It's not controlled by the fob. And what you have here is a retractable sliding hard tonneau cover, and it is uh, quite effective. It's pulled back through a strap that you would connect uh, just to one of the hooks on the side here and it locks in place. Uh, it also has the ability to lock halfway, so if you wanted some uh, thing to be partially covered. The, um, the lift gate can be done manually and also with a fob, you just pull it back and hold on for one or two seconds and it comes down nice and soft. Inside, you've got storage on the sides. You have your hooks, you can adjustable. Uh, there's lots of versatility here. You've got LED lights that come on. There is also some built-in under bed storage here pretty similar to what you'd see on the ridge line um, it's deep it has the ability to say uh, uh, if you want to tailgate you could put some cold drinks and some ice there's even a drain plug underneath there so once it's done I mean if you're also off-roading you could probably put some uh, your dirty clothes in there or mucky stuff to keep it safe out of the bed so versatility happens there as well Getting in is pretty easy because you actually have a series of step-ups. You've got two step-ups just here in the corner. You can actually step up just below the license plate and even on the bumper itself. All are capable of uh, uh, being used as step-ins and it's easy access to your bed. They also say that the tonneau cover itself can be stepped on. Um, anything up to about 220 pounds uh, is capable of standing on it. What, which means I'm not going to because, well, I'm just a, just a hair over. But it worked. Looking here at the interior of this new Santa Cruz, what we have is a really more of a, a minimalist kind of uh, concept. Uh, it's very uh, uh, designed in an efficient sort of open concept manner. Uh, you take a look at just things, even like the, the vents for the heating and cooling. They're thin, they're widespread. You actually can diffuse the air. It's not meant to be overly uh, uh, obtrusive, shall we say. Um, the center stack, the uh, center uh, infotainment is, uh, what they actually call it kind of an edgeless, this is what they would call it, edgeless, and it does angle up. Now, I was initially a little bit worried that there'd be a lot of glare, but for whatever reason, despite the angle outward, um, there is no glare. It's been quite good. Um, what you have is um, 10 inches of visibility, so you have uh, all of your, uh, your GPS, your map, and other controls for information. Um, it is a it is a flat surface 
And I mean, again, this is minimalism. And I got to admit, this is something where I don't love as much, especially when it comes to uh, some of the tactile controls you want. Case in point being uh, volume uh, for your stereo and tuning. Uh, they've got your touch knobs for volume or just on your flat touch. I I've never liked it. Um, we've complained about it in the past. Honda had this and they got you know, went back to the knobs. I always think certain controls, no matter what you're trying to make it look like, should always be more tactile. Yes, there are stereo uh, controls mounted on the wheel and that's typically where you use it, but we have a, a, a buy still to sometimes reach. And, and I think if it's not a knob, you tend to, you know, when you're driving, your arm isn't a stable, the easier you can grab it, the better. So I, I don't like that, but, but otherwise it's generally uh, uh, efficient, well laid out. The the, uh, the the gear selector is ergonomic. And here, if you have the drive select modes, if you're in the premium, you'd get it. I actually like where the heated uh, and cooled seats, as well as the heated steering wheels, uh, our controls are right here. It's a very right at your armrest, so that's fine. Your uh, driver information display, um, uh, here in Canada, it's standard. You have your 10 inch digital uh, LED uh, display there is uh, a two and a half inch with uh, uh, analog gauges on lower trims in the US um, but it generally feels good it generally looks sleek modern again this open concept idea this dual cockpit uh, sort of scenario uh, is overall uh, something I think is pretty good At launch, this 2022 Santa Cruz has two powertrains available, but that is in America. In Canada, there is only a single powertrain for all trim levels, and that is a turbocharged 2.5 liter four-cylinder engine that puts out 281 horsepower and 311 pound-feet of torque. It is paired with an eight-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission. Um, and in the U.S., lower-end trims have a non-turbocharged 2.5 liter uh, four-cylinder engine that one puts out 191 horsepower and 181 pound-feet of torque paired to a standard eight-speed automatic given that this uh, santa cruz is built on the tucson platform and the tucson is built with hybrid plug-in hybrid and possibly even fully electric uh, powertrain options in mind it's reasonable to assume that we would see that uh, with the santa cruz at some point as well and it does make sense given the fact that uh, this again is targeting uh, sort of an urban type of, uh, of driver and uh, certainly uh, where we're looking at uh, electrification and diversified powertrains we see a greater emphasis on that with urban consumers at this time anyway versus rural Posted fuel economy numbers for the uh, turbocharged uh, variant here is 10.6 liters per 100 kilometers. That's 22.2 US miles per gallon. Um, I don't have the fuel economy numbers uh, uh, with me right now for the non-turbocharged, but I will post it up here in the review just on the visual overlay uh, here now. Uh, I myself have been uh, bettering the posted fuel economy. Now I've done a lot of highway driving uh, in my time with it, so that would probably make sense. But I believe currently right now I'm at about 9.2. Uh, I will post a screen grab uh, of what I finish, this, uh, finish with when I return it at the end of my week and see how I've compared. A really big advantage here with this uh, Santa Cruz uh, is with towing and the uh, turbocharge variant uh, does have up to 5,000 pounds of towing capacity. Now that is when you have selected all-wheel drive. In Canada, H-Track all-wheel drive is standard, but in the US you have more trim uh, options available. So you can get the turbocharged with uh, front-wheel drive only, not necessarily the H-Track all-wheel drive. And in that case, you have a maximum tow rating of 3,500 pounds which is the same as with the non-turbocharged uh, 2.5 liter as well, 3,500 pounds of towing. Over the years that I've been doing uh, automotive reviews, I, I've come to notice how depending on the vehicle that I drive, uh, as you drive along, you, you get noticed or stared at. And, and, and to be honest, because of just how distinctive and different the styling of the Santa Cruz is, I've, uh, I've become quite uh, um, in tune to noticing just how many people take uh, double looks or have pulled up beside me just to get a clearer look of what this is or uh, we'll be walking by and they'll stop and they'll turn their heads going, what was that that just drove by? 
And, and I guess if you're someone who likes to be distinctive and different with uh, who you are, what you drive, how you look and stuff like that, well, you know, this definitely is going to be one of those vehicles you'd want to consider. You know, I really have to tip my hat to Hyundai for being willing to take some risks in their design ideas and offerings uh, because we've gotten so comfortable with just producing more and more of the same. And I think there really is an appetite for something that is distinct in its appearance, but also very functional in its overall offerings. I, I really think they have something here with this Santa Cruz. It, it definitely, there's going to be people who are going to buy it just because it has uh, the unique look to it. And maybe even some are going to be tripping nostalgia and thinking this is the new Camino or El Camino, I should say. Um, but the functionality that the idea of what it's trying to do, if you really listen to the rationale, if you think about it and you consider who is um, going to buy this, I think they may have a winner. In my week here, I've seen people look at this at first and go, whoa, what's this? And then the more you hear and the more and look at it, the more they think about what it's offering, they go, you know what, this actually makes sense. I'm really gonna be interested to see how this performs in the next six to 12 months to see if my suspicion and Hyundai's research holds true. But I certainly enjoyed getting this chance to get into this 2022 Hyundai Santa Cruz, and I hope you enjoyed watching this video along with me. But that's it for now. I'm Eric Novak. Thank you for watching. There's plenty of ways for you to keep connected with me. So check out some of my social media links, suggested videos, and you know, I'd really love it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel.